Because voices don't walk. You understand? He walking through the garden. And he get ready, and he and he's talking to them in the garden. Go ahead and read. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Hold it now, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Then he had to be there then, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Because we were just talking from heaven. It don't matter where you had that, you can still hear me. He can still hear you and everything. They hear from the presence of the Lord because the Lord was right there in the garden with them. But go ahead and read, though. From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh-huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid uh -huh. because I was naked. Go ahead. And I hid myself. Now check out what the Lord going to ask, uh, 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 ask uh, Adam. Go ahead and read. And he said, uh -huh. Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told thee that thou was naked? Somebody told Adam that he was naked. Mm -hmm. Well, who told Adam he was naked? His wife did. Mm -hmm. She saw that that tree was good for food. She took up it and did eight. Right? Mm -hmm. Then, cause, well, who told her? Mm -hmm. Satan told her, didn't he? Because mm -hmm. she ate of that tree. Mm -hmm. Satan told her. She went and took it back to her husband. He did eat. Right? And the Lord said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Go ahead and read. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So what tree did they eat of then? It had to be Satan, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It had to be Satan. Because he told them, ain't no tree walked up there. They walked up to the tree and the tree started talking to them. Or they bit an apple or looked at the apple. Or they, the apple was talking to them they bit into it. No. Satan told him that he Satan told Eve that you were naked. And she went back and told Adam. Go ahead and read though. You want 17? Uh yeah. Skip down to verse 17. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. And unto Get Adam. Get a little caught up. Go ahead. <laughs> And unto Adam he said, Uh huh. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You see that? He said, Because you listened to the voice of your wife. So they didn't just take no apple and bit it, did it? They heard some words. And then she went back and told Adam. Now, Adam, oh, everybody in trouble now. But the woman, she going to get it. <laughs> her, her, her problem is worse than his. You understand? But Satan got it worse than everybody, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He said unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Go ahead and read. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Uh-huh. Curse is the ground for thy sake. Go ahead. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh-huh. Now you will have to eat from the ground, Adam. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Uh-huh. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return <coughs> to the ground. Uh-huh. For out of it was thou taken. Go ahead. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Uh-huh. He said, he said, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust shalt thou return. So now... They brought upon us death, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Adam did, really, because he listened to his wife. Because mm -hmm. the book told you uh, that Adam brought about death, right? He listened to his wife. Now, so, so since Adam put this death on us, well, we go back to the dust. We couldn't get salvation then. Because before this, man was made to live forever. Before this, man would live forever. We could, we could we could go and look at Adam right now if they hadn't ate from that tree. You understand? Man wasn't made to die. But since he ate of that tree, now God said, okay, you have to till the ground and everything, and then you're going back to the dust from where you came. So Adam brought this death on us, right? The one where we go to sleep. So now, let's go to Psalms, the 69th chapter. Psalm 69. And we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, pick it up at verse 4. Psalm 69, and we're going to start at verse 4. Adam brought this death on us. Well, we had to go back to sleep. 
or we have to go to sleep, rather. Sleep in the dust. So 69 and 4. Go ahead and read it. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. Uh-huh. That they would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully. Uh-huh. Are mighty, then, then I restore that which I took not away. He said, then I restore that which I took not away. Well, what is this that he restored and took not away? That he took not away. Adam took eternal life from us, didn't he? He made us whereas we have to die. Now, the Lord telling you right here, I'm giving you back that which I took not away. Now, let's show you that this is the Lord. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead and read. I am become a stranger unto my brethren uh -huh. and an alien unto my mother's children. Go ahead. For the zeal of thine house have eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon you me. You see that? He said the reproaches of them that reproach thee have fallen upon me. They sinned against you, Lord, but now i got to pay the debt. Who are we talking about right here? We're talking about Jesus, aren't we? Read that verse again. For the zeal of, of thine house have eaten me up, uh -huh. and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. They sinned against you, but their sins have fallen on me. i got to pay back the sins that they put, or that they put out. I gotta pay them back. Skip down to verse 21. Go ahead and read. They also gave me gall for my meat. Uh-huh. And in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Now who we talking about now? We know who we talking about now. Don't we? <laughs> we talking about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. It's that his resurrection. Did you see Saul speak, David speaking of his resurrection right here? Mm -hmm. So he said, the reproaches of thee that reproach thee have fallen upon me. He said, I gave that back which I took not away. I restored that which I took not away. Let's go see what this is. Let's go to uh, uh let's go to uh, Hebrews the ninth chapter. Hebrews nine, and we'll pick it up at verse eleven. Hebrews nine and eleven. Hebrews nine and eleven. Hebrews 9 and 11. Hold on for one second. Maybe I might want to throw this in there. Hebrews 9 and 11. Let's go. Before we go there, let's go to uh let's go to Romans, the 15th chapter. Uh, yeah, we're going to we're going we're going to come back. We're going to come to that, that Hebrews nine, but let's go to Romans fifteen first, and then we're going to pick it up at verse uh, one. Pick it up at verse one. Go ahead and read. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, uh -huh. and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor uh -huh. for his good to edification. Go ahead. For even Christ pleased not himself. For even Christ pleased not himself. Go ahead and read. But as it is written, uh -huh. the reproaches of them that that reproached thee fell on me. So now we, I just want to confirm that we are talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee have fallen on me. We just got to read that, didn't we? So now we really confirm that this is talking about Christ, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. <clears throat> See, he, he, he gave that back, or he restored that back which he took not away. <clears throat> Hebrews 9 and 11. Go ahead and read it. But Christ, being become an high priest of good things to uh -huh. come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, Go ahead. not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, uh -huh. neither by the blood of goats and calves, 
but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, uh -huh. having obtained eternal redemption for us. Oh, wait a minute. So that's what he, that's how he entered uh, uh, to the holy place. He said, but Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect type of not made with hands, but that is say that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and cattle, but by his own blood, he entered to, in, in once into what? The holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. This is that same right here. Because remember, come, first come the Holy Ghost, right, or wisdom. Then you got to walk in it, that's righteousness. Then sanctification, then redemption. So once Christ shed his blood, what did he do? <clears throat> he redeemed us. He gave us back or restored that back which he took not away. Now what do you mean he redeemed us? He redeemed us. He gave us. He, uh, we obtained, have it obtained an eternal redemption for us. Let's look at this a little bit more. Let's look at this a little bit more. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse Colossians 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Colossians 1 and 9. Colossians 1 and 9. Go ahead and read. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Uh-huh. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See, because this is what you got to put on first. <laughs> this knowledge and wisdom and, and uh, uh, spiritual understanding. Because if you don't have no knowledge and wisdom, then you don't even know how to serve him, do you? That's why I say they got that thing backwards when they say, how you doing? Well, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's backwards. <laughs> got to be filled with the Holy Ghost first, which is wisdom. Go ahead and read that you might walk worthy of the Lord and unto all pleasing, uh -huh. being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the, the knowledge of God. Go ahead. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suf suffering with joyfulness. Uh-huh. See, you got to be patient in this and you have to be long suffering with your brothers and sisters. You got to be patient and long suffering. Go ahead and read giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh-huh. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. See, he had delivered us from the power of darkness. We were walking in sin at first. Mm -hmm. Then God's word came, and he gave us his commandments and his laws. Now we're not walking in darkness no more. Because we know we are children of the light now. Because we're walking in his word, right? Go ahead and read. Read that verse 13 again. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness uh -huh. and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Because, you know, a lot of people don't understand this or know this, that Jesus got a kingdom. He got a kingdom. You know, he told you in Revelation, the third chapter, uh, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. And he that come and, and he that open will I come in and sup with him. And will grant with him to sit with me in my kingdom, even if I overcame and sat with my father in his kingdom. So why is he sitting now? In the father's kingdom. And his kingdom is to come then, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Jesus got a kingdom. And where is that kingdom going to be? Right here on the earth. See, he never promised you. To, that's the father's kingdom up there. You never, you, you're not never going there. He promised you his kingdom. He had translated us into the son of his kingdom. Now, if he had said he had translated us to the father's kingdom, then you're going to heaven then. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say that, did he? Heaven on earth. <laughs> That's where it's going to be. Right here on earth. You know, because got, I got brothers saying that you're going, you're going to be up there for a thousand years. <laughs> no, you're not. You ain't never going up there to heaven with a father. He had translated us into his son's kingdom, which is going to be right here on the earth. Go ahead and read. 14. Uh-huh. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And we have what? Redemption. Redemption. We are saved by grace, aren't we? Yes, we are. And we have redemption 
through his blood. Go ahead and read. Even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, okay, so now he said, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, and whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. So, uh, what, what saved you then? His blood. That's what saved you, his blood. Y'all, excuse me. That's what saved you. See, everybody else, they listen to CDs. I still listen to tapes. So. <laughs> <You know>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still behind times a little bit. So, but anyway, the blood is the one. That, but it did what, though? It redeemed you, didn't it? So this, so if you are saved by grace. What is grace? Grace is the blood of Jesus. Now we ain't gonna go off into that Romans the third chapter, Romans the fifth chapter, and go deep into this grace thing because we deal with that and uh, we deal with grace in a whole other lesson. But grace is the blood of Jesus, and that blood of Jesus is what redeemed you or saved you. Because if He had shed His blood, then we'd be all men most miserable. We would die, and that'd be it. You know, you might well go ahead and live it up, and that'd be it. But since Christ died and rose from the grave, now, whether you did what you want to do or you did what God told you to do, he's still going to raise you from the grave. And then it's going to be payday. So now, so he said, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Let's go to uh let's go to uh, uh Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians 1. And we're gonna pick it up at verse 9. Colossians 1 and 9. Did we just read yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First Peter, I'm sorry, first Peter 1. First Peter 1, and we're gonna pick it up at verse. Uh, pick it up in verse 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. Go ahead and read. For as much as ye know that ye are not redeemed with corruptible things. See, you have not been redeemed or saved with corruptible things. Go ahead. As silver and gold uh -huh. from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your father. Uh-huh. But with the precious blood of Christ. Hold on, what was you redeemed with? The precious blood of Christ. What was you saved with? By grace are you saved. What is grace? The blood of Jesus. Romans the third chapter. I believe that is. Romans three or five. So now, he said, but with the precious blood of Christ. So this is what redeemed you. This is what saved you, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As of a lamb without blemish. And without spot. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So this is what redeemed you. The uh, By grace are you saved. By the blood of Jesus are you saved. You, you have been redeemed with what? The precious blood of Christ. That's simple, ain't it? Not, uh, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You saved in the sense that you got salvation. He just gave you, restored that back which he took not away. Adam took death, uh, put death on the table. He took eternal life from you. Jesus come to give it, give you back eternal life. But he had to shed his blood in order to do that. Now, because uh, uh, without the blood, there's no forgiveness for, for sins. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Romans the fifth chapter, Romans five, and we're gonna pick it up at verse. Nine, Romans 5. And we're going to pick up at verse 9. Romans 5 and 9. Go ahead and read. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Now he said clear the guilt. That, that, that's what justified means. Clear the guilt by his blood. What saved you? The blood of Jesus did it. That's what redeemed you. Go ahead and read. That's why Paul said, we are saved. That's what he means. Go ahead and read. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Uh-huh. For if, when we were enemies. Because he said, for we shall be saved from wrath through him. Because if he had came, died, and shed your blood, there would be nothing 
but uh, uh, hell fire for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Oh, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son? Go ahead and read. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We shall be saved by his life. Because if he had to win the grave and just stayed there, mm -hmm. <laughs> then that's what happened to us. <laughs> but now since he came out that grave, now we can get eternal life. We're going to come out the grave. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And not only so, uh -huh. but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by whom we have now received the atonement. Hold it now. He said, not only so, but we also joy in through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received what? The atonement. Well, what makes the atonement? It is the blood that makes the atonement, ain't it? So that's what redeemed you. That's what saved you. By grace are ye saved. The blood of Jesus. That's what saved you. Now, does that sound like you got salvation already? He just came back and gave you, uh, and, uh, made it to where you could get eternal life again. That's what he did. But you have to do it by what? Uh, uh, first, you got to get the word of God. Then you got to walk in it. Then you sanctified. Then here comes redemption. If you ain't walking in the Word of God, then you talk telling people that you say you, you, you really got it backwards then. If you ain't walking, if you ain't keeping those commandments, then you sure enough ain't saved. You sure enough ain't saved. So now, let's go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Let's look at this again. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let's look at this again. Go ahead. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he is a new creature. See, because you were doing those old things, you know, doing all the things that you want to do, walking in sin. But now that you're in Christ Jesus, you know, you're a new creature now. You, you were walking in wickedness or walking in evil. Now you're walking in the law. That's what makes the difference, ain't it? Because if you just talk about uh, uh, you're a servant of God and you ain't walking in the law, what's the difference between you and the one that's still walking out there doing wickedness? What's the difference between y'all? Ain't no difference, is it? What makes the difference? The law is what makes the difference. But go ahead and read. Old things are passed away. Uh huh. Behold, all things are become new. Go ahead. And all things are of God. Uh huh. Who have reconciled us to Himself. By See that? God have reconciled us to Himself by what? Jesus Christ. Uh huh. And have given us and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. But how did He reconcile us? Reconcile us back to God through His blood, right? Through His death and by His blood, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. To wit. That God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, uh -huh. not imputing their trespasses unto them. Because he said, I'm going to forgive y'all sins. All right? I'm going I'm to wipe the slate clean. You understand? And now, this is what you got to do. Now, if you don't, you're going to pay for your own sins now. But I'm going to wipe the slate clean for this man. I'm going to give that back. Well, I'm going to restore that back which I took not away. And what did he restore back? Eternal life. Because Adam took it away from us, didn't he? Now God, or Jesus, restored it back. Go ahead and read. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Romans the 8th chapter. Romans 8. Let me show you that you're not saved like uh, men try to say you are now. Uh, you got salvation now. Romans 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Romans 8 and 21. I wish it was that way. <laughs> we was locked in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just continue... To go to church, you ain't got to do nothing. You understand? 
<laughs> just go to church. You might sing in the choir. You ain't got to keep no law. I wish it was like that. Cause me, cause for, 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 for me, you know, although the law is beautiful and I love keeping it, but if I didn't have to, you understand, I wouldn't. If I could still get salvation without doing it, then I would. Just do whatever I want to do and get salvation. Man, who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it ain't like that, though. There's work to be done. Work to be done. Romans 8 and 21, let me show you that you ain't got salvation in the sense that you uh, 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 got eternal life. Romans 8 and 21, go ahead and read. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption uh -huh. into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Go ahead. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Uh huh. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, uh -huh. even we ourselves grown within ourselves. Go ahead. Waiting for the adoption. Wait, see, right now, you, like Paul said, he waiting for the adoption. Right? Go ahead and read. To wit, the redemption of our bodies. See, to, to wit, the redemption of our bodies. That's when you say, in a sense, you got salvation. His body ain't been redeemed yet. He said, and not only they, but ourselves also. Now, this is Paul talking to the Romans, so we know he was alive, right? He said, not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. To wit the redemption out of our body. And that's what we're doing. We're waiting. Right now, you know, we, we, we our body is grown and we can't wait to get rid of this body mm -hmm. and get our new body. But we are to wit the redemption of our bodies. Go ahead and read. 24. Uh-huh. For we are saved by hope. Uh-huh. But hope that is seen. He said, but we are saved by what? Hope. Hope. <laughs> that's all we got now is a hope. Go ahead and read. But hope that is seen is not hope. Uh-huh. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Go ahead. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? We doing what? Then do we, I wish Paul would speak a little more English. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But we're going to break this down for you. He said, for we are saved by hope. But how hope... That is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? If you got it already, why are you hoping? He said, but if we hope for that which we, that we see not, because you don't see salvation right now, do you? You don't see eternal life right now. He said, for, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with what? Patience wait for it. Now if Paul waiting for it, then what are we doing? We wait for it. We ain't got it yet. Not salvation in the sense that we got eternal life coming. Cause Paul ain't even got it yet. So and he was one, he was a servant of God, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. The Lord knocked him down personally and told him that you're gonna suffer for the uh, for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what Paul did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So if we gonna get and so if anybody we walk around talking about they saved in the sense they got salvation already would be him. But he said he went patience. He waiting for it, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse... Uh, pick it up at verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. Everybody got it? Yeah. Go ahead and read Ye are all the children of light. See, we are the children of light. Why? Because we're walking in them laws and commandments now. We were in darkness, but he has translated unto us into the kingdom of his dear son, right? He said, you are the children of light. Go ahead. And the children of the day. Uh-huh. We are not of the light, nor of darkness. Uh-huh. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Uh -huh. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. Uh -huh. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. See, he's not telling you, don't be walking around drunk. 
you know, with wine and stuff and alcohol. He ain't talking about that type of drunk. He talking about spiritually drunk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And for an helmet, uh -huh. the hope of salvation. For God have not appointed us to wrath, uh -huh. but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Now, hold on one second. Uh... I got something wrong here. I'll tell you what, just for the sake of time, uh, wait a minute. I think that's supposed to be. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> read verse 8 again. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, go ahead, read verse 8 again. But let us who are of the day uh -huh. be sober, putting on the breastplate. Of faith and uh -huh. love. Go ahead. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. The hope of what? Salvation. No, you ain't got it yet, then, if you're hoping for it, do you? He said the hope of salvation. The hope of it. That's all we got right now is a hope. Let's read it again. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter, the first chapter. 1 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 1 and 1. He said a hope of salvation. You ain't got it now then, do you? If you're hoping for it, if you got it already, why are you hoping for it? Mm -hmm. We got a hope of salvation. 1 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. 1 Peter 1 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now, now Peter, he's really going to lay it out. Go ahead and read. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. Go ahead. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. He said through sanctification of what? The Spirit. The Word, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Unto obedience. Oh, now you got to walk in this, don't you? Mm -hmm. Obedience. That's how you walk in righteousness. Go ahead. And sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope. He begotten us to what? A lively hope. A lively hope. That's all we got now is a hope. Go ahead. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ see, from the dead. He, see, he gave us a hope now. He has begotten us by a lively hope. He restored that back which he took not away. Adam uh, brought death, uh, took eternal life from us. Jesus came back and gave it back to us, right? Mm -hmm. But he begotten us by a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Go ahead. To an inheritance incorruptible. incorruptible. To an inheritance incorruptible. What that? Immortality, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And undefiled. Uh huh. And that fade not away. Go ahead. Reserved in heaven for you. Uh huh. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Uh huh. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Ooh, you see that? <laughs> you see what salvation is going to be revealed? He said, Who have kept, uh, kept, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed what? In the, in the last, last time. time. So you ain't got salvation, I do you? Nope. <laughs> you not told you ain't saved in the sense that you got salvation. Because salvation is going to be revealed when? In the last time. The last time ain't here yet. <laughs> that is not here yet. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians 9. 9. Now, Paul, gonna, now he's going to come with it a little bit deeper now. Paul going to come a little bit deeper with it. 1 Corinthians 9. I don't know why people uh, don't read this. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Go ahead. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? You see that? Know ye not. They which run in a race run all. Uh-huh. But one receiveth the prize. Uh-huh. So run that ye may obtain. He said, you know what? One gonna receive the prize. But in this, if this, in this race right here, if you, you uh, uh, finish this race, you're going to receive the prize. Mm -hmm. So he says, so do what? Run. 
that you might obtain. Go ahead. And every See, man... You, you ain't got it yet, then do it. You ain't got the prize yet. You still running. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the end ain't got here yet. You ain't got to the end yet. If you're going to die or the Lord going to come here. And then that's going to be the end of this race. Go ahead and read. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh-huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Go ahead. But we an incorruptible. See, we're doing this to, to uh, uh, obtain a incorruptible crown. Go ahead and read. I therefore so run. Hold it now. Wait a minute. Paul said he's he running. He ain't got salvation yet. Then do it. Mm -hmm. He running. He trying to uh, make it to the end of this race. But go ahead and read. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Uh huh. But I keep my under my but I keep under my body. Go ahead. And bring it into subjection. Uh huh. Lest that by any means, when I when I have preached to others, I find my I myself should be a castaway. Now, okay, read that one yeah, more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I keep under my body uh -huh. and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others. He said, I keep under my body. I got to keep myself under subjection. Lest I preach to others. Go ahead. I find myself should be a castaway. He said, I myself should be. So it ain't no once you say you always say it, it is. <laughs> he said, he said, I'm gonna, I got to keep on my body unless I'm teaching other or preaching other. I myself be a castaway. He will cast away where? Cast into the lake of fire. That's the furthest you can be cast away, ain't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the lake of fire, ain't it? Right. <laughs> so, so that thing about once you saved, always saved, that's not true according to the Bible, right? Right? And then they always talk about Paul. Well, that ain't what Paul said right here, is it? Go ahead and read. That's it. Okay, so now, he said, I keep under my body lest I preach to other. I myself become a castaway. That don't sound like he said he didn't do it. He said he running in a race. Now, let's go to, uh, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Romans, the 13th chapter. Romans 13, we're going to read one verse, verse 11. Romans 13 and 11. Romans 13 and 11. Don't sound like Paul saying he's saying in a sense he got salvation, does he? No, he still, he's run, he run, he running in a race. Just like we are. We are still running in a race. And they without us, I think I might throw that in there. We got a little time. Let's go to our, we have Romans 13 and verse 11. Romans 13 and 11. Go ahead and read. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Uh-huh. For now is our salvation nearer. Hold it now. He said, for now is our salvation what? Nearer. Then he don't have it already, then do he? He doesn't. He said it's nearer. He said we got salvation. He said, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't see nobody saying that. You know, that's just some cliche that sounds good that men kept repeating. Mm -hmm. But don't sound like Paul was saying that, do it? None of the apostles. Read that verse again. And that knowing the time that now is it is high time to uh -huh. awake out of sleep. Uh-huh. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So he ain't got salvation yet, then do it. He said, now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Nearer. Now we got it already. Hebrews 5. Hebrew, Hebrews 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Hebrews 5 and... Five. Hebrews 5 and 5. Go ahead and read. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. Uh -huh. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Uh -huh. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead. Who in the days of his flesh, when he when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, uh -huh. and was heard in that he feared. Go ahead. Though though he were a son, yet yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Go ahead. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation 
unto all them that obey him. Ooh, now that just really put the icing on the cake, don't it? Mm -hmm. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that do what? Obey him. Obey him. So he the one tell you how to get salvation, then ain't he the one tells you how to get salvation. Let's go to uh let's go to uh uh, uh let's go to Revelations 22. Now he ain't gonna tell you how to get salvation. Revelations 22, and we're gonna pick it up in verse 12. Revelations 22 and 12. He is the author of eternal salvation, ain't he? Revelations 22 and 12. Go ahead and read it. And behold, I come quickly. Uh-huh. And my reward is with me. He's on it now. He said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. So now he got the reward. Then how do you have it already? If it's with him. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how you got it already? What's the reward? The reward is salvation. Eternal salvation, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So how you got it already if it's with him? He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, uh-huh. To give every man according as his work shall be. You mean you got to do some work? You do. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give every man according to as his work shall be. So the reward is with him. And no better reward than salvation, is it? No, sir. His reward is with him. Let's go look at it in Isaiah. Let's go to Old uh, chapter, uh, Old uh, 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 Testament and look at it. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. And we're going to put that. This is the master now. He's the one who's telling you uh, how to get salvation. And when you going to get it. Isaiah 40 and 10. Isaiah 40 and 10. Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, uh -huh. and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. His reward is what? With him. With him. The prophet Isaiah knew about this. It's just that us and this generation don't know about this. But now we do, don't we? Because mm -hmm. the Lord had revealed his, he didn't teach us man wisdom. He, he gave us the wisdom which the Holy Ghost teaches. So he said, his reward is with him. Now, let me just run here real quick. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Hebrews 11 chapter. Then we're going to read one more after that. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse, pick it up at verse 6. Hebrews 11 and 6, I believe that is. Yeah, Hebrews 11 and 6. Go ahead. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh-huh. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Skip down to verse, uh, just go ahead and read, uh, read verse 8. By faith, Abraham. Stop right there. Uh... Uh, uh, skip down to verse uh, uh, keep reading no, keep reading by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should re after receive for an inheritance obeyed uh -huh. and he went out not knowing where, whither he went by faith he sojourned into the land of promise uh -huh. as in a strange country Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Uh huh. For he looked for a city which had foundations. Go ahead. Whose builder and maker is God. Uh huh. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of of one. And him as, as good as dead. Alright, uh, what verse you at? That was 12. Alright, skip. Now, we're going to do a little skipping. Skip down to verse 20. Read it. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. Stop right there. Verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, 
Bless. Stop right there. Verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because when they because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Now, skip down to verse uh, verse 39. Go ahead and read. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith. Uh, we, ain't gonna, we ain't read all of them. We could have read some more. He said, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith. Go ahead. Receive not the promise. But they had received a promise. What's the promise? I stand at the door and knock. And any man let me in, I will come in and sup with him and grant with him to sit with me in my throne. Even though I overcame and sat with my father down, and my father sat down with my father in his throne. Read verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, uh -huh. that they without us should not be made perfect. They without us shall not be made perfect. So they're not going to get their salvation before we do. Just like they didn't get their salvation before the apostles did. And we're not going to get our salvation before they do. They without us shall not be made perfect. Everybody's going to be made perfect at the, at the same time. Everybody going to get it at the same time. Now let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. So that saved that we saw, uh, uh, that people say, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That ain't talking about saved in the sense that you got salvation already, then is it? That's talking about saved in the sense that you have been redeemed. Now you got access to eternal life. Through what? Through the blood of Jesus. He gave, he restored that back which he took not away. Matthew 24, this will be last. Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew 24 and 13. Go ahead and read it. But he that shall in, but he that in, shall in, endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all of the world, for a witness unto all nations. Uh -huh. And then the end shall come. So now, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Thank you. All right, and now we're gonna have the reading of the announcements. Uh, what are the announcements? You don't have an announcement? Give us one second. We don't need the announcements. I will tell you that uh, uh, May the uh, 19th, we will be holding the uh, Feast of Pentecost here at Israel's Church of the Living God. The Pentecost starts uh, the 18th at evening. That's May the 18th at evening. And it goes through May the 19th at evening. Even. So we will be keeping the day of Pentecost here. Uh, let me see. I think I got. Bam! <laughs> I got one. Grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel's Church of the Living God. If this is your first visit. We hope you'll come back and worship again with us next Sabbath. There is no eating and drinking in the sanctuary with the exception of water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of the Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers, 